Hello everyone, I'm Food for Dogs. Let me just, I'm wearing this jersey and five layers underneath because it's that cold here. Hello everyone, uh, this is a very quick and prompt to latest pickups show and tell. I saw I had 10 games sitting there on my lounge floor. Um, waiting to be processed so let's get on with it shall we and the first one off the stack is one I already showed on Twitter I was so excited when it arrived um, together with um, Saga Frontier uh, two games two older classic games I am so so looking forward to you know how i love these games it, it says legend of mana because this game is a legend it's gonna be awesome i just love the art style in legend of mana that alone is just makes me happy okay um yes i'll have to open that up it's called Warborn and it's a tactics strategy game and it nearly escaped my attention but nothing much passes by my radar as you know so let's just check that the disc is okay because it came loose inside that's the disc <sighs> yep seems to be okay as I've mentioned before uh, we can send uh, people to the moon uh, but we uh, cannot have a manufacturing plant where discs can be pressed reliably onto their little plastic holder that is clearly uh, beyond the technical level of our civilization. I have about 50% of my PS4 games arriving, the disc clattering loose in the case. Now, Warborn is, as I mentioned, a tactics strategy game. It is troops based, so as opposed to tactics games where you're dealing with individuals in battle here you have to maneuver units of troops around the battlefield usually with one commander in charge and it says on the back cover rise up and deploy for battle in the variable armor a technologically advanced suit of war in a solar system engulfed by conflict, lead your strike force of deadly mecha towards victory in turn-based tactical combat. So for people who are fans of mecha, using mecha in combat, it might be of interest. The reason I was alerted to this game was because of a review uh, at Digitally Downloaded. Now, the editor there, I know, is very, very experienced with um, tactics and strategy games, a huge fan, knows them inside out. So uh, I take his reviews um, seriously. So I'll just um, tell you briefly what he wrote. He refers back to Advance Wars. Now, you've probably all heard about Advance Wars, and most of you will have played one of the games in the series. There's a huge fan base for Advance Wars and it is considered, you know, one of the granddaddies of the genre. For some reason, the IP has never been revived and uh, people have always been sad about that and said, where is the new Advance Wars? Well, we've had a few games, but not many in this troops-based genre. There was one recently called War Groove, and I think that's available on all platforms, and that is a really, really excellent game, 
quite challenging. And the other one I need to mention that nobody seems to remember is Brigandine. Now that is also uh, based on an older IP, the original Brigandine game, and is a troops-based strategy tactics game. So we have a few examples in recent times, but not any game that has been a really um, big seller or caught uh, the attention of people. Now, Warborn is another quite small game in terms of developer, and it was published, I noticed, by P-Cube. They specialize in sort of niche games, and they often dig out what I would call little hidden gems. So I take note of all these things. So I'll just tell you now what uh, the editor, Matt, uh, wrote in his review about War Born. Who knows if this one will find the audience that it deserves. Unfortunately, it's one of those indies that appears just derivative enough to overlook, especially when for many people War Groove has been all the Advance Wars action they've needed over the past year. But Warborn has its own merits. It's a sharper and more dynamic tactic strategy game, and what initially seems like limitations with a small number of units and game modes proves to be this game's great strength by allowing it to deliver the kind of balance that even the best tactics games struggle with. So, a very balanced viewpoint, but coming in on the side of this game. So, I took note of that and on the, on the strength of that review, I decided to get a copy. Okay, something uh, different, because you know I like uh, roving around different uh, genres and different types of games. And this is Akiba's Trip. And this is the Region 3 Asian Edition. There we are. And as is usual these days, it's only the disc. The information on the cover is in Chinese, so um, I can't read that out. But, of course, um, the game has subtitles in various languages, including English. And I forgot to show you earlier uh, that Legend of Mana comes with some delightful little goodies inside. So if you're getting a copy, look forward to that. There's a game code for the soundtrack. And look at this, a little sticker set. Isn't that cute? Okay, the next one is another physical copy from Asia, this time from the Japan region 2, which explains why it has Japanese on the cover. But again, it fortunately does have English subtitles. Uh, yes, it's Monster Boy and the Cursed Kingdom. And I don't know whether they had a limited print run or a short print run uh, certainly for the European region, because it came and it went very quickly and I, I missed getting a copy. Uh, so I decided to, to get the Japanese one. And it doesn't matter to me, because all I need is the English subtitles. And I'm good. As I've mentioned before in one of my unboxings, I think we're seeing more and more 
games, not only in Asia, but also for Japan, being published with English subtitles already in the game. So the option is there either digitally or physically uh, to get the Japanese game and, and play it in English. I'm okay with that. It's better to have the game like that than not have it at all. Now here we have Brave Land Trilogy and this one and the next game are both published by Red Art Games in France. The Brave Land Trilogy I'm currently playing digitally because it was in the sale. To be honest, I'd forgotten I'd ordered this copy a long, long time ago. And now it's here. And I, I'm that close to finishing the game. So I'll keep this sealed as a special copy, kind of. And you can see how fast the daylight is going. I already had to pull back the curtains because it was getting quite dark. Uh, this is the other game from France from Red Art Games. Now, I'm a big fan of The Bard's Tale ever since I started playing Bard's Tale 4. I think this is in a more humorous vein and I do have a copy of the PS Vita version as well. I haven't played it yet and I thought it might be nice to, to have it on the PS4 as well. This is the back cover and you may notice the lady with the very generous decolletage. So it was developed by Inzile Games. I expect it will be quite a fun jaunt. Maybe something that will entertain Poodle Pa as well, as long as he can get past the generously proportioned lady. From Limited Run Games, the long-awaited and much lobbied for Scott Pilgrim versus the world, the game. When I ordered this a long time ago, I didn't really know what the game was, what it was about, how it played, and it was only later that I heard about it and people kept saying this is a really really tough game a sort of a brawler I think so a lot of button mashing etc and I got a bit nervous I thought oh, will I be able to play this um, could be a bit tough you know because of my hand condition I have no idea it's the usual thing I'll just have to give it a go and see so that Scott Pilgrim defeat the League of Evil Exes. Rediscover the beloved 2D arcade style beat em up game inspired by the iconic comic book series and movie. But it's certainly nice to have it, especially since people have been clamoring for it for so many years, ever since it was uh, delisted digitally and you just couldn't get it anymore. So the next one is The Complex, and that's one I definitely want to play with Poodle Pa. We love these types of um, games, interactive cinematic sci-fi thriller also published by uh, Limited Run Games. After a major bioweapon attack on London, uh, two scientists find themselves in a lockdown laboratory with time and air running out. The Complex is an interactive cinematic sci-fi thriller where your decisions and relationships with other characters will lead you to one of nine suspenseful endings. Well, we managed to get all the endings in the last one we played together, which was The Late Shift. So we'll have a go at The Complex. 
let's hope it really is suspenseful. Now next up I have a bit of an uh, unusual game I suppose you'd have to say. It's a platformer and as you know I don't often do platformers. There usually has to be another reason for getting it. This one I bypassed originally because when it came out it had very poor reviews citing a plethora of technical problems and I thought I'm not going there. But time passed and then I happened to see some uh, video coverage on YouTube, people playing it, and they seemed to be having fun. And they did point out that it was a bit awkward with the controls, but once you got used to it, it wasn't too bad. And the game has apparently been patched a bit. Uh, and it just looked very, very colourful and a bit intriguing. And I thought... Why not get the last tinker before copies disappear completely? It's one of those maybe unloved games that I sort of feel a bit like someone's got to give it some love somewhere. <laughs> so, you know, I try to do a bit of a rescue job on these kinds of games. And I always go in hopeful, thinking, well, there might be something good about it. Let's see if we can enjoy it. And that is the last Tinker, City of Colors. Master the power of color. Lovingly handcrafted world. Explore color town in free running fashion. And this is really the last game, and it's called Ancestors Legacy. As usual, only the disc inside. Take command of your army as you storm through medieval Europe with Ancestors Legacy. I already had a quick look at this one because it arrived with a case all smashed up to smithereens and I wanted to check that the disc was okay so I played the first little you know introductory mission. I think this would be classified as falling into the RTS genre real-time strategy where you have different war troops that you need to take command of and then send into battle here and there. It's very strategic and I've never really played a game like that before. I basically haven't got a clue what I'm supposed to do. All I can say is that while I'm not sure what I was actually doing, it looked jolly impressive. The graphics are pretty good. I hadn't expected that. Now, I think this would originally be a game for the PC. That, that's what it looks like. And I would say with the, with the mouse controls quickly clicking here and there would be much more convenient. But I have to say, despite my complete lack of knowledge of the genre and what to do, I still managed to use the controls and get stuff done and there was no hitch or glitch with the controls and the, the menus were all pretty good. The game was guiding me in the introductory section through roughly what to do and what troops to get and where to go. There were markers. I thought if I really sit down and spend some time and knuckle down I'd be able to learn this just by playing this game. You know, that's pretty impressive, I think. I, I had no idea what to expect. It's a complete surprise, honestly. Now, I know RTS is a very niche genre, but there are very dedicated fans out there, and most of them, I think, play on PC, but sometimes you may want to play on console. And I know the transfer from PC to console can be very problematic and often results in poor menus and poor controls. But in this case, 
I would say after having played just half an hour, if you're a real fan of the genre and want something on PS4, I'd encourage you to have a look at it. Uh, look at some video game play, check out some reviews. It, it might be up your alley. They cite on the back four playable nations in an extensive single player campaign inspired by historical events. And that is uh, correct. You start out in the late 700s, early 800s when the Vikings are coming over, sailing to England, trying to invade, trying to get in at the Isle of Lindisfarne and, you know, basically being drifted off course. That That is all historically correct. And that is exactly the first campaign. So, a very exciting stuff. If you love Vikings, um, there you are. Another Viking game. Advanced tactical options combining the use of terrain, experience and morale. Cinematic battle camera view puts you right in the center of the action. And I have to say for once that is not just blurb jargon. That is how I experienced it. I think that's a correct description. The camera work is pretty good. There you are, a wee bit of a discovery, maybe. Ancestor's Legacy. And there we are. We've got through all ten games. I will just, as usual, quickly pan around the table. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much for watching. As always, please keep well. I'm Food for Dogs. Bye bye.